I'm here in Middletown, Connecticut at Lyman headquarters. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with Spencer Carroll from Lyman. Thanks for making the trip, Gavin. Design engineer. This is the guy that designs some of the equipment that you reload ammunition with and good times. We get to see inside the Lyman headquarters facility. Now Lyman is multiple brands. Yep, Lyman is a family of brands. Um, we consist of Lyman, obviously, Packmire, now Mark 7, Tackstar, Azoom Snap Caps, Trias Traps. We are a bunch of brands under one roof. And you do quite a bit of the production here. Yep. And then Mark 7 also has a facility in Florida and you've got some other offsite facilities for Packmire and some of the other brands, yep. is that right? Packmire is located in Prescott, Arizona. Originally it was from Los Angeles, but it's been moved to Arizona. But yeah, Mark 7 is a facility with roughly 25 employees in Fort Myers, Florida. Awesome, so you guys get to see Lyman from the inside out. I'm gonna take you through all of the different areas and we're gonna to talk to some cool people. Should we do it? Yep, let's do it, man. Awesome. Here we are in Lyman's Machining Center. A lot of people don't know about Lyman. We're actually really vertically integrated. We have a lot of machines in-house. A lot of stuff that we sell, we machine in-house. Mm -hmm. So coming here, this is our, our whole area of vertical machines. Right now we're doing various stuff. Like right now, right here, this is the toggle for the All-American 8. Comes in as a raw casting. We bring it in, send it out to a local powder coater. Comes back and then it gets machined in-house. Awesome. Yeah, here's actually uh, how it starts. Hmm. This is an ass cast part. It's obviously going to be different than what you get, obviously, when it's finished. It needs certain parameters to be able to be cast. This is cast iron. This comes from, these are American castings. Yep. And well, so you've got one person here running multiple machines, right? When things all get up to yep. running speed? Yeah, we run a multiple machine standard here. It allows us to kind of really make parts affordable. Mm -hmm. um, these parts, we kind of time everything, so as we're walking around, all these machines are kept running. Mm -hmm. So walking down here a little bit, we have uh, kind of the big Mahoney. Oh. This is an All-American 8 press casting. Um, once again, comes from a tier one automotive cast iron supplier, made in America. We sent it out to a local uh, powder coater shop, comes back, and walking a little bit further, It's a little messy and oily, but here's the press as it comes off the machine. Bottom's decked. The hole for the ram is uh, drilled and reamed. Hmm. You have the, the surface for the primer, the top for the turret. Hmm. After this, it'll get cleaned, it'll get rust preventative, and then it'll go to our assembly cell area. Awesome. Let's go there next. Have here so this is just what we saw in the machine shop this is an yep. all-american 8 machine body it's a lot cleaner than the last time you saw it after it came <laughs> out of the machine it got degreased and actually rust preventative because as it says cast iron you need a light coat of oil film yep to keep it from rusting so here's here's the press body here's the turret ground ready to go so what's going to happen now is the All-American 8 and the whole Brassmas series is done in a lean manufacturing way called a one-piece flow. Hmm. There's no sub-assemblies built. These presses go from a raw casting that's machined all the way through, and at the end of this, this is gonna be a press in a box. This is kind of the most efficient way mm -hmm. to, uh, to streamline your manufacturing. It's good for inventory. It's good for you know, sub-assemblies. You know exactly what you have and you build final presses. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's take a walk around and see, uh, Very cool. let's see this whole thing going. So this is an example over here of a, of a two-man cell. This is run by two people at one time. It's perfectly balanced where two people are able to kind of do the exact same amount of workload, 
One person here is assembling the links onto the toggle and the ram, pushing it in, lock tightening the set screw in, mm -hmm. pushing it down a nice flow, going in, going over and installing the turret. The next person over is gonna take that. They're actually installing, the press handle itself is still completely unassembled. There's no sub assemblies here. So mm -hmm. the press handle, the, you hear the, the torque gun going there. Yeah. You get the balls pressed on the handle, the nuts put on, it comes over, it gets put in a box and then right onto a pallet. This pallet just goes right into our warehouse, goes off to our customers. This is so cool to see this because if you recall, I was one of the first people to get the brass smith presses. Yep. And I remember talking with you specifically about some of the minor issues I had, a, an E-clip that wasn't on one end and all that. And then yesterday when we were here, you showed me how the assembly instructions were updated. Yep. And, and to see, I mean, American steel yep. coming in from an American foundry. You've got high-tech equipment here. You've got American machinists that are overseeing that process. And then we've got American jobs right here with people putting the presses together. Quick question for you, you know, if you are doing one assembly task, mm -hmm. does that get, is there like repetitive stress? Do the, do the team members like rotate through the different tasks and assembly tasks? Yep, there's all sorts of, it's all tasked out where the time and the fatigue and all that, they don't stay in the cell for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. There's usually only one, three, four hour stints. And the cool thing is these cells, these cells stay completely intact. Mm -hmm. If we need all American 8s built, they're working in the press cell. If we need mm -hmm. trimmers built, they go into the trimmer cell. Tumblers, all the, they're all cell based. So we have the ability to move people around, they're all cross-trained, yep. and uh, we have the ability to move people around and just build as needed. It's the biggest thing, especially in today's market, we, you don't want to overbuild. Yeah. You don't want excess inventory. You want to build and have it be able to go out the door. Yep, and what's cool about this size company, I think, mm. is you're an engineer, right? You yep. get to be a mechanical engineer, you get to be a manufacturing engineer, mm -hmm. and you get to have your hands in every bit of the process from start to finish. That's one of my favorite parts about working here. Not only do I help design the products, I help write the work mm -hmm. instructions, get the manufacturing engineering, work on fixture design for the machining centers, yep. work on testing, uh, work in the quality department, and I also get to go to places like the SHOT Show and, right. and try to sell this stuff. Yeah, so. I know people that work at Boeing and you know they might have one bushing or a couple bushings on a wing or something like that. And that's and it. They don't really get to have that same kind of end-to-end -end experience, so that's really cool. So there's a lot of satisfaction. We even go as far as we're in the sales and the marketing meetings thinking mm -hmm. of these products. Awesome. So everything from cradle to grave we handle here. Cool. So outside we were talking about Azum, which is one of the Lyman brands. Yep. Azum is a snap cap company, training ammunition. We do everything from in-house to manufacture. They go out to uh, a local anodized vendor, they get hard code anodized, and then we uh, stuff the dead cap and laser the caliber. As you can see here, we do millions of these a year. It's a big part of our core business. Um, we believe in snap caps as a good training tool. Yeah. And uh, they're widely adopted in the industry. Yep, I know my defense instructor uses Azum products and uh, I want to incorporate them into more of my defense training and you know with myself family everyone there's been some variance over the years from other companies but azum's been the tried and true the first the real aluminum trading round you got some raw ones there can i yep. can i hold those sure can so oh, those are incredibly lightweight that's crazy uh so these are aluminum and they're turned on a cnc machine is yep. that correct yep they're they're turned here in house um then they go out we want to protect them a little more so instead of just a standard anodized it is a hard coat it gives you a little more slickness, a little more wear resistance. The primer pocket is then stuffed with a proprietary dead cord material, which impacts the, the primer. That's actually what the firing pin impacts. Yep. It, thousands of times it can do it and still be completely okay. And mm -hmm. then just for a nice touch where the normal head stamp would be on the round or marked Azum or whatever caliber they are. Nice. So you don't mix them up. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, but if you go through, we do everything from rifles to here's a 223 oh, round. And shotgun, right? Yep, even all the way up the shot show. So big 12 gauge. It's a love big that. 12 gauge. <laughs> this is a little heavier. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously there's more to Lyman than simply manufacturing and assembly. Um, yep. Everything's kind of under one roof here. We're walking into our shipping and receiving area. And this is 100,000 square feet total, yep. is that right? This, this building is 100,000 square feet. We have roughly 90 employees here mm -hmm. right in central Connecticut. Um, right now we're walking into our receiving area. This is where we're all for raw materials, all of our packaging, all of our goods will all come in through these shipping docks from our mm -hmm. local vendors. Um, we try to use local vendors for steel, anodized, coating, all that stuff as much as we can. Um, it's our shipping area and it's our whole warehouse. It's, uh, it's, it's a big facility and really the, the first couple times you walk in here, you're kind of taken <laughs> abreast by it. Yep. 
So how do you keep track of where everything is? Um, everything is all actually done on serial numbers. Okay. Um, if I look on our standard ERP system and I know the part number, I can even search by name, I know exactly which row, which bin location, everything from a screw to an All-American 8 that's been sitting on the press. I, I know I know where everything is. Gotcha. So. If only my uh, shop was that organized. Yeah, that turns into a great scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Are you willing to show me the ballistics lab where you guys do your testing for the load manual? Sure. Let me uh, introduce you to Dave Rosecki. He's, okay. our, he's our test shooter here. Cool. And uh, get you going. Awesome. So Dave, tell me what you do at Lyman. So I'm the test shooter here. Uh, basically, we have to collect all the data for our book somehow. So, so you get paid to reload ammo and shoot all day? One round at a time, <laughs> yep. <laughs> this guy's got the dream job right here. <laughs> got lucky. Actually, our jobs are a little bit similar in that way. Yeah, technically, yeah, <laughs> absolutely true. It's just that you gotta do it more on camera than I do. Yeah. So, yep. So the Lyman reloading manual, 50th edition. Yes, we are on our 50th edition. So wow. we've been doing it for well over 100 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a really unique manual in a sense that we don't just have one specific brand. Mm -hmm. We actually have many different brands in our manuals. So if you get any of the other, uh, I don't want to say competitors, but you know. Well, a bullet um, manufacturer wants to highlight their exactly, bullets, right? right. So Hornady is going to have a Hornady manual yep. with Hornady bullets. Hodgson and has data online for Hodgson powders. Exactly. And so on and so forth. Yeah. So what we do that's unique is we take a little bit of everything. So mm -hmm. we'll have multiple different powder brands. Uh, we'll have multiple different bullet brands. And we just kind of accumulate all that data because it saves people time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's better to have it all in one book than multiple books. Yeah. And you can't get too much data, right? That's, exactly. That's totally something I've learned. And like in the long range book, the Lyman long range book, yes. I totally love how you guys broke it down by small primer and large primer yeah. for some of those calibers where you actually have the choice, like six millimeter Creedmoor or right. six five Creedmoor and so on and so forth. Yep. Speaking of that, those are some of the new cartridges. You guys have over a hundred years of data in the vault yeah. as it were. Yeah. Are you focused then mostly on new cartridges, new components, new bullets. How does your time break down in terms of priority? So all of our stuff in our books is pretty much uh, classic data that we uh, roll over. But in addition to the data that we roll over, we also eliminate stuff that has been discontinued, for example. And we also add in new cartridges as they come out. Um, we also add new bullets uh, mm -hmm. and also new powders. So is that so, where most of your testing is, is focused, is on, yeah. on some of that new stuff? Correct. Gotcha. Yep. Can you show me a little bit of the equipment that you use and some of the facilities? Sure. Awesome. Yep. In we go. <laughs> so this is, is this is the range here? This is the range, yes. Okay. 25 yard indoor range. Yep. Tw uh, 25 yard, 30 if you stretch it to this hallway. Gotcha. Uh, but you know, 25 is usually enough for what we do for fun on lunch breaks. Gotcha. Yep. And then you're shooting in here, is that right? Yes. This is our main shooting bay here. Oh, yeah. So right here is our universal receiver. Uh, the way this works is we have different pressure barrels that we put in here. So this just unthreads, mm -hmm. and you slide this thing out, put a different caliber in, depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And they all use this uh, transducer here. 95% of our pressure barrels are conformal transducers, which means it basically uh, conforms to the shape of the cartridge that gotcha. we're shooting. So you don't have to drill a hole through the case. Exactly. Right. Yep. So that, of course, uh, means that you kind of need a couple different transducers because mm -hmm. nothing's, you know, close to itself. So uh, usually the transducer will work for, work for uh, multiple calibers uh, as long as they're similar in their radius and taper. Mm -hmm. Um, so we put that in there, we set it to its correct uh, height, so it's basically completing the uh, chamber wall. Mm -hmm. um, and we hook it up, it runs to our machines in there, mm -hmm. and when we have a, a test to load to put in there, we just load it up to whatever grains, whatever bullet it yep. is, whichever primer, throw it in here, close this up, and this thing basically sits in there. I run away to the other room <laughs> behind the thick glass and, you know, yep. just in case, you never know. Yeah. This is a very thick barrel, so nothing's really going to happen. But, um, but yeah, this is also pneumatically fired, so I get to go over there 
It's hooked up to an airline. I push a big red button, goes boom. Gotcha. And pneumatic. I, yep, pneumatic. And I, I get the readings and just write it down and adjust the load from there. So I could come up mm -hmm. a tenth of a grain, come up three tenths, do you know gross or fine adjustments depending on what the readout is. And you've got different specifications for each cartridge, right? The SAMI specification Correct. for maximum pressure. Exactly. And you're able to extrapolate <clears throat> the actual internal pressure from your transducer yep. and you work up, you measure velocities and pressure and you're able to get a starting load and a max load and all of the data, all of the velocity data there. That exactly. Needs. So yep. if you guys are wondering where your data comes from, this is it. This thing looks like a piece of artillery, kind of like a little desktop model. This is super cool. So yep. how about the barrels? Can you show me where those are stored? Absolutely, it's right around the corner. Okay. Yep. Okay, so. This is our uh, cage. We keep most of our pressure barrels in here. So I'll go in and check it out. I'm going where very few people have gone before. <laughs> yep. So this is uh, our mostly organized barrels. As more calibers come in, <laughs> we kind of have to start from the small and work our way up to the top with the different racks. Um, but yeah. Do you mind if I grab one out? No, absolutely, okay. go for it. So this, yeah. this one right here, Six Dasher. This mm. is very, very popular in the PRS community right yep. now. So who makes these? So most of these barrels are actually made in-house by our uh -huh. ballistics lab manager, Tom Griffin. Yes. Yep. He buys the barrel blanks and he does everything himself on a lathe right outside his office. Very cool. Yep. And do they all have a similar type of rifling? Uh, yeah, it's basically dependent on what the caliber is. Uh, it's just like, you know, going online, ordering anything else. Mm -hmm. If you want a six millimeter barrel with this twist rate, you mm -hmm. can get it with this twist rate or another twist rate. Um, but yeah, it's just the blank that we get. So this is actually something that he adds on to it. Okay. Yep. So it's literally just this section that we get. So we can get it pretty much to whatever we want. Very cool. Well, thanks for the tour, Spencer. Thanks for coming all the way from Washington. That was super cool to see Lyman stuff, to see Mark 7 stuff. I've got actually a separate video on that mm -hmm. to see stuff that we talked about in there and then some stuff that we really can't talk about yet. Yeah, we kind of pulled the sheets back, showed you some cool <laughs> stuff that's going to be coming for Shop Show this year. But I'm uh, really excited to show everyone at the beginning of next year what's coming. Yeah, absolutely enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. I hope you guys enjoyed the factory tour. And I want to make sure that you're subscribed with notifications because we got some really cool stuff to talk about in the coming months and coming year. So until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading. Thank you guys. Hundred thousand feet. This would be the ideal dude shop if you got this yeah. building as a shell. I was saying if I could just have the strip. <sighs> how many cars you could line Ex up here? How exactly. many bikes? A lift. Twenty lifts. <laughs>